Space agency investigators today explained what caused a shield aboard Skylab 1 to rip off shortly after launch and almost wreck the mission. The Board of Inquiry reported that the shield was designed wrong, with holes in it. Air rushed into those holes and tore the shield away. And then on Saturday, the second Skylab mission is scheduled to be launched from Cape Kennedy. The mission is expected to be man's longest in space so far. 59 days. The second crew of Skylab astronauts is scheduled to be sent into space from Cape Kennedy tomorrow for a 59-day stay in their orbiting laboratory. If they accomplish the mission, their stay will be the longest period man has been up in space. And NBC News will cover the launch beginning at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.45 a.m. and Central Time, and 6.15 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. Jim Hartz has the report. Heavy rain showers drenched the Kennedy Space Center late this afternoon, but clear weather is forecast for the launch of the second manned Skylab mission at 7-11 tomorrow morning, Eastern Daylight Time. The three-man crew, Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lausner, spent the day lounging on a nearby beach. Skylab program officials say they are eager and willing for the start of their 59-day trip in a space station 270 miles above the Earth. They will be in space more than twice as long as the first Skylab crew, but medical experts see no danger to the men. Going into orbit with the three astronauts will be a number of mice, spiders, and fish, which will be exposed to weightlessness to see how they behave. The countdown has been going on without a serious hitch, and scientists are hoping to get back another wealth of information about man's reactions to long-term spaceflight. Jim Hart, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. The weather not so good now, but the forecast looks good for tomorrow morning. The longest ride in the history of mankind, over 20 million miles, will begin aboard this rocket early tomorrow. The timing of the launch, a crap shooter's dream, 7-11, a rocket heading skyward at 7-11 a.m. Eastern Time. Later in the day, the crew will link up with the orbiting Skylab space station, will hang out a no-vacancy sign, and remain there for 59 days more than twice as long as the first Skylab crew, the most severe test yet of man's durability in space. The three-man crew arrived down here yesterday afternoon, a Navy man, a Marine, and a civilian. Mission Commander Alan Bean, 41 years old, Navy pilot. He has been in space before. The other crewmen have not. Bean walked on the moon, a flight of Apollo 12. Jack Lausma is the Marine, a major, a flyer, 37 years old, says he'll miss his golf game while he's up there. The civilian is Owen Garriott, 42 years old. He has a master's and a doctorate, electrical engineering, taught at Stanford until he was picked as an astronaut. He'll carry America's first mustache into space. Today, the wives of two of the astronauts visited their husband's place of work. That's Mrs. Lausman taking her hat off. Mrs. Bean came along, too, on the brief inspection tour. Both ignored a wifely urge. They did not rearrange the furniture. CBS News will broadcast the launch tomorrow beginning at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Morton Dean, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center. The second threesome of Skylab astronauts is scheduled to be launched from Cape Kennedy tomorrow morning for a record 59-day stay in space. ABC's Jules Bergman is at the Cape and has a report on the men and their mission. We're all very anxious and very pleased to be back at the Cape. And we're anxious to start off on this trip for which we've all been working, at least the three of us, for something like, oh, two or three years as a team and five or six years total. And uh, we're really anxious to get started with it, and we hope to be seeing you folks in, when we're back here on the ground in a little over two months. Skylab 3 and the three astronauts in good shape are psyched up over the longest manned space flight ever attempted. But it's pretty hard to find anyone else really excited about the mission. The three crew members face a 59-day mission, orbiting the world more than 900 times. Navy Captain Alan Bean, who explored the moon on Apollo 12, commands the flight. Dr. Owen Garriott, a physicist, is the scientist on board. And Jack Lausma, a Marine major, is the third man and, like Garriott, a rookie. Once they reach the space station and dock, they'll tackle 62 separate experiments aimed at utilizing space to help the Earth. But the medical knowledge on how well men can take a two-month-long space flight is the single biggest objective. There are fewer doubts this time, but there are still doubts. They plan to double their exercise time to an hour a day to fight off the effects of weightlessness. Carrying hundreds of pounds of new items, from extra underwear and seasoning to spice up their food, to film and experiments, it's the heaviest Apollo spacecraft ever launched. The missions get longer, tougher, and more dangerous, yet are somehow accepted as being commonplace by the people. 
and NASA has yet to prove the ultimate value of space to mankind, which is the real goal of Skylab. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News, reporting at Cape Kennedy. ABC News will provide live coverage of tomorrow's launch from Cape Kennedy beginning at 7 a.m. Eastern Time.